Hi, this is your host Sapin Bharatiya and we are here at Linode headquarters in Philadelphia and today we have with us once again Blair Lyon, uh, Head of Cloud Experience at Akamai. First of all, it's great to have you back on the show. Absolutely, it's been a while. So it's, uh, it's really nice to see you again. Yeah, so since it's been a while, I also want to kind of um, hear your thoughts on how you are seeing the kind of continuum of compute also, if you can define what it means, because oh, sure. now we are also looking at <laughs> Akamai and Linode. So a lot of things yes. have changed, right? Yes, and a lot, a lot has changed. I mean, it's one of the things that we've seen in the market even prior to the Akamai Linode uh, acquisition is that you know today when uh, application developers are thinking about how they're going to build their their modern applications, they're really thinking about not only just the kind of the core sort of components that would go into it, they're thinking about the cloud as this continuum, as this ability to not only build and host, and then of course deploy and secure, and then even deliver to the edge my application so that I have a great customer experience. And so that, that, that sort of cloud or core to edge concept with security overlay is really an important thing. And that's kind of what we call the continuum. And that's an important way, I think, that developers are, are shifting their mindset around how they build their modern applications today, because you really need to think of all of those components at once to be able to do something you know, that's really innovative and is really going to work for your customers. Uh, where does multi-cloud, hybrid cloud fit into the, this continuum? I mean, there's, there's so many uh, trends in the marketplace right now. And of course, multi-cloud is a huge trend. And many would say kind of like open source. I think we say open source as you know, one, and uh, we all use open source products. Uh, you know, multi-cloud as a, as a thing, I think has really won uh, in terms of it being you know, fully adopted. Right now, if, depending on what surveys you're looking at, you're at 70 to 80 to more percent of businesses either are using multi-cloud or have a multi-cloud strategy underway right now. Of our business customers uh, today, they're about 75 to 76% of those use multi-cloud uh, configurations. So uh, for us, it's really important that we work inside of that model, uh, because if you think about what Akamai and Linode now is becoming, becoming this you know, pure play cloud provider, you know, we don't, we're, not, we're not involved in all these other ancillary businesses like the other hyperscalers, uh, and we're not necessarily gonna have all of those hundreds of other products and services that maybe like an Amazon AWS would have, but our approach is gonna be provide those core services along that continuum of, of uh, cloud to edge, but be able to do so in a way that's very portable, very cloud agnostic, uh, open source friendly, so that you are have greater, so you as a developer and as a business have greater control, ownership, and agility of your applications. Because you may choose, let's say, a Google Cloud Platform for this particular region because they have great regionality, let's say, in Europe. Or you may use uh, Linode Akamai because our Kubernetes engine is so simple and, and powerful, where you may use you know, Azure for something else. So whatever those combinations are, we want to make sure that the customer is in control and can choose the best product, the best, best vendor for the right situation, the right workload, the right use case. And that's, that's, I think, what we all want, right? We just want to, we would always do that if we could, if it's easy enough. And now with you know, third-party tools like Ansible and Terraform and others and a lot of these integrations happening and companies like Akamai Linode that are making it easy to run multi-cloud. Uh, it's, it's, much, it's, it's, it's much more possible than it's ever been before. And I think that's a really, really good thing. Since we are talking about, you know, multi-cloud, uh, just let's, let's stay with cloud for a while. I talk to a lot of folks and they have started to feel some pain when it comes to cloud, especially, you know, mm -hmm. uh, hyperscalers or private cloud provider. One is the complexity of Kubernetes world. Mm -hmm. And second is the cost. Cost not just because of the potential economic downturn. So they have kind of re started to reevaluate that what we are doing, we are doing just because the trend that everybody is using these. Do we really need, is this, we are looking at it as a tool mm -hmm. or we are looking at it as because everything, everyone else is doing it. So when you look at Linode, you folks predate 
you know, AWS. So when we look at managed service provider, we also, so one of the solutions to that problem is managed services, but mm -hmm. sometimes it gets so opinionated that it doesn't remain the same Kubernetes they wanted to use. Yes. So they lose the flexibility. Yes. But so, so talk a bit about how do you look at this problem? And once again, what is Linode doing once again as a pure play is staying to the roots? We're making things simpler. I think what's important is that you can, you can, Choose your path, right? You can actually uh, today uh, run it, run a Kubernetes application without using our managed Kubernetes, or you can choose to use the managed service. And it really depends on what's right for you. To be able to roll your own may make a whole lot more sense than using our managed service, which we try and put the easy button on it. We try and make it as easy as possible for those that you know where that capability is going to work for them. But in, if you have something very sophisticated or very custom, being able to roll your own may may make more sense. So I think the idea, as long as you're offering that sort of duality or those two options, I think you're you're in good good shape. But it's once you sort of overemphasize the managed service and try and make some custom things in there that really make it proprietary or give it more a, too much of a lock-in feeling, and that's that is where I think you run into issues. Right. And second problem is data gravity. Pure place sometimes feels like a safe place for folks because mm -hmm. nowadays we are kind of living in a data-driven world. Mm -hmm. And when you look at some of these hyperscalers, they have the data gravity, and sometimes they might even compete. What role do you see these pure play, like as you mm -hmm. mentioned, Akamai, Linode will play in that world where companies will, they will still use multi-cloud, mm -hmm. but some workload, they will want a place where they can keep their workload without having to worry about potential competitors. I mean, it's it's amazing. We, we do a quarterly research report right now with TechStrong Research, and, and the last one that came out last quarter, uh, tipped almost almost about 50% of the 800 or so worldwide DevOps professionals from small businesses to enterprise were all saying the same thing, that about 50% of them feel that they are either today directly in competition with their cloud provider or soon will be. Uh, and that was shocking. And that's like, skyrocketed uh, since we started this, uh, this, this quarterly research. And so, I mean, a lot of people feel that way. I mean, why does why does you know Walmart not run an AWS because they're in direct competition with their e-commerce business? So it's a it's a real you know clear and present danger that a lot of people have, whether you're in pharmaceuticals or in the shoe business or you're in groceries or or whatever. Uh, these other big cloud providers, and especially Amazon, is getting into almost every business uh, that's out there. And so I think there is a wonderful. Uh, opportunity right now for a pure play cloud provider. We don't we don't run a search business. We don't resell your data. We don't have a sh you know, shoe shoe business or e-commerce store or any of that stuff. All we do is provide infrastructure, cloud infrastructure from compute to edge, and the, and the security in between. That's it. Uh, and I think that's a refreshing option uh, for the market. And we've talked about this with uh, alternative cloud providers. I mean that was kind of one of their key things and as uh, one of the early cloud provider or alternative providers, Linode, you know, we said the same thing. Hey, you know, we're a pure play, we don't have that, have those other um, you know, trappings of the big hyperscalers. But the challenge that they have, and we had too, was the scale. Just you don't have the global scale necessary to really be able to do the really big workloads. And then you don't have the breadth of services, that continuum of compute that we talked about, because yes, it's important to be able to have a core data center and be able to build your application on it. And yes, you can do some distribution, but you're not getting to the edge. You're not having the power of 4,800 worldwide you know, uh, locations that uh, Akamai has. And you don't have those high-end security capabilities like WAF and identity management and zero trust and other things that, that Akamai has. So you need all of those combinations of services and that's one of the powerful differences. So if you could package that all up into a pure play, then you got something interesting. And you, you, you mentioned it then when I look at the Akamai Linode combo. Are you not hyperscaler now? Well, I mean, we have a lot of growth to do. I mean, uh, Akamai is an enterprise, you know, uh, uh, world-class, you know, company in many ways. They're kind of the most powerful CDNs. They have incredible security products. Uh, and now Linode, I mean, we're, we've been an alternative cloud provider and we have a pretty powerful network and a great price performance, but we're only in 11 locations right now. Uh, one of the things that we just uh, just announced was you know, that we'll be you know, more than doubling our core uh, compute locations and then adding you know, dozens and dozens, probably well over 100 of this sort of distributed uh, cloud locations. And so 
when we can scale up, as we're doing right now, uh, investing you know, a tremendous amount into that scale, now, now we can really you know, provide uh, some amazing alternatives uh, to even the hyperscalers that are, and customers are looking for that scale. Now they can come to Akamai, now with Linode, we'll have the data center's uh, uh, capability, we'll have the powerful Akamai network, which is one of the best in the world uh, that they'll be able to tap into, plus all of the other you know, Akamai products and services. Excellent. I will go back to the point that you're making about the distributed. Uh, we talk about edge computing a lot, and you touched upon that also. Edge doesn't necessarily mean it's not just the IoT device. It, it could be mm -hmm. a data center at the edge. Mm -hmm. and, and it could be resource-constrained data center. Mm -hmm. It could be data center near the users. So we yep. can define you know, edge, but it has its own limitation. It has its own benefits also. Mm -hmm. You talked about distributed. So, so to talk about you know distributed in the context of edge, and if you can also talk a bit because you did touch upon you know what Linode and Akamai are doing in this space. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's this it's a it's a fantastic concept. It's something Akamai has already been doing. Um, is is a, is this idea of a of a distributed uh, computing layer, and so of course Linode has sort of the core kind of bigger you know all the products, you know a lot of capability, a lot of storage. Uh, of our current 11 data centers now soon to be doubled. Uh, and then Akamai has their 4800 you know, CDN locations with edge workers and, and other capability. But, but out there at the edge, you, you have limitations of, of what you can do, how much computing capability you have. And then you don't always want to go pointing back all the way to that data center. So something in between would really be amazing. And that's this distributed layer concept for computing. And that is going to be hundreds of locations often in hard to reach locations. So these will be in, in, in much more difficult to reach areas where you wouldn't necessarily have a large data center or areas that like even AWS might have not even have coverage. We will have these distributed locations in those, in those regions. And what's cool about it is it's mainly gonna be containerized you know, computing power. Uh, so it'll be lighter weight than the core, but much more powerful than the edge capability. So you'll be able to design and build some really interesting applications uh, that'll have very low latency, high performance, be able to kind of pick and choose where your workloads are calling uh, to different sort of levels of computing power. And that's gonna be a game changer. So we're really excited about it. There's some great use cases uh, that people have come up with around that. Uh, but just at its simplest level, just getting into some of these other harder to reach locations, I think is gonna be a win just in, just in that. So when we're talking about all the changes that are happening, you know, in the space, especially looking at the Linode and Akamai combination also, uh, is the alternative cloud story, you know, just the way we talk about multi-cloud, is that story still important? Not only to your customers, but the potential customers that we talked about, there may be a lot of use cases where companies mm -hmm. do want to lean towards pure play, and most of these pure play are alternative cloud, cloud providers. Yeah, I mean, it's it. I mean, Linode helped kind of found the alternative cloud category, and and then if you're thinking about that, you're like, okay, that's like DigitalOcean and OVH and maybe Vulture and Hetzner and and Linode and others, and. Um, and you know, it really is an exciting category because I mean, it's grown. We've been tracking it and doing these surveys. And, and if you take all of those alternative cloud vendors and bundle them together, they're almost as big as uh, Google Cloud. Uh, they're almost like the number three cloud provider, which is really cool. And we've seen a lot of growth. And a lot of that stems off of you know, this resistance to complexity and looking for better price performance and s simplicity and wanting non, you know, I don't wanna be competitive. I, I wanna have something uh, that is, you know, more developer friendly, maybe. Uh, so there's, you know, a lot of these other things that draw people to alternative cloud. But it's a, it's, it's you know, as a category, it's grown, and there's a lot of, lot of use cases for it. But it is a, uh, it also has limits uh, too. And so, you know, all of those providers I just mentioned, even Linode in the past, has had limits in terms of how far we can scale. Uh, we're not a hyperscaler. We don't have the breadth of capabilities that, like let's say, Amazon does. And we don't have the breadth of services either. We don't have powerful CDNs and security services and all of that. And so that's what's so exciting about now is there's almost, we don't want to call it another category, but there's something in between uh, these sort of very closed environment, walled garden kind of hyperscalers with all of their other competing interests. And then you have these alternative cloud providers, the DigitalOcean's and OVH's and so on, that are you know, simple, affordable, accessible, which are great, but then they don't have the scale 
to really grow with and all the breadth of services. So wouldn't there be nice or something in the middle? And that's exactly the vision that Akamai saw when they bought Linode. They said, we have the security capability. We're the best CDN in the market. We have edge workers. We have all of that. And now if we add Linode's you know, high performance uh, cloud computing capability and then really turbocharge it and scale it uh, like, like, like we're doing right now, then we can offer really a, a new option uh, in the marketplace, something that has the best of both those worlds, you know, the simple, affordable, accessible, but then the scale and breadth of services and can bring those together into something that's new, a pure play cloud provider uh, that really can grow with you from being, you know, if you're an individual de developer or a small team or startup, all the way to the tippy top enterprise. Uh, and it's, I think it's a great thing for the market. We're excited about it. We're getting great feedback and it's gonna be a really good thing. We are almost at the end of 2022. You did touch upon, you know, the growth in your capacity yeah. data center, but what are the things that in the pipeline that you can safely share this time? Oh, sure. I mean, uh, I mean, right now, obviously, you know, scaling uh, what Linode has already been able to do is super important. Uh, and we've launched a lot of, you know, wonderful, critical uh, services that people have wanted, you know, like, like a you know, business ready Kubernetes service, uh, like managed database services uh, as well that we just launched this year. So that's really kind of checked some of the remaining boxes. We will be launching things like a virtual private cloud VPC uh, as well, which is a core sort of business requirement. Uh, so we'll be doing that, but a lot of the other product development is going to be on our integrations. Uh, so we, we don't want to create every pass and SaaS product, you know, to be competing with the AWSs of the world. We want to be able to connect and integrate and make available through our, our one click app marketplace or integrations uh, for people to be able to sort of roll their own and be able to have greater control between sort of the cloud provider, whether, whether it's us or anybody else, and their applications, so they can truly be cloud agnostic. They can have portable workloads. They can choose the best best vendor for the right 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 use case, and and that's just that's just great. Having that freedom and that choice, you can do cost optimization. You can do regional optimization. You can you can you know pick pick and choose the different types of managed services that you want that you need for certain things, and then not use them for for other others. So it's going to be a really good good option for everybody. Uh, Blair, thank you so much for you know taking time out today. It was actually Absolutely. incredible to actually be able to sit down again and you know mm -hmm. talk to you and discuss these things virtual versus you know versus virtual. But I also say that uh, feel that you know all the work that you folks have done over time that actually helped a lot of companies you know go through COVID pandemic because a lot of companies they quickly moved to the cloud. Absolutely. Otherwise, those companies would have perished. So you know uh, it, it, being able to run your business during those pandemic, so it, a lot of credit goes to you folks as well. You know the cloud providers. I mean you predated predate AWS, so you know you should take the credit where it's due. But you know uh, I would love to you know do, keep doing these shows and mostly in person as well. So thank you. Absolutely, I know it's so nice to see you in person. We didn't get a chance. You're always doing remote, but this is this is wonderful. Thank you.